Did you know that there are five different sex languages? Which one does your spouse speak? Dr. Doug Weiss is a licensed psychologist, counselor, and the executive director of Heart to Heart. He has published a wide variety of books on the topics of addiction, intimacy, infidelity, and recovery. With his personal experience, Dr. Weiss understands how hidden addictions can destroy lives and consume marriages. As the president of American Association for Sex Addiction Therapy, his main focus is seeing people set free from their sexual issues. Dr. Weiss has been featured on shows like Oprah, 700 Club, and Good Morning America. Please welcome Dr. Doug Weiss. Hey, Doug, welcome back. Hi, Leon. Good to have you. Good to be back. Five sex languages. That is going to sell. <laughs> well, it, it is selling. It's the number one seller on Amazon. Is it was the first week it came out. Uh, this is a, a fantastic revelation and insight into giving people the tool to talk about sexuality in a very clean way, but it can totally transform their sexuality. You know, why do so many churches, Christians, just struggle to even talk about sex? Well, if you're not good at something, you shouldn't talk about it. Okay, so, <laughs> but to be fair, you know, I, I got an MDiv as, as well. You know, I went to seminary, and they didn't give us any training on sexuality. No. They taught us how to teach the Book of Romans, how to, you know, Greek and Hebrew. I mean, that's really useful for a sex life. And so, but they didn't teach us this stuff. Now, God designed sexuality, okay, and we as, as Christians could be leading this conversation. And I am. I talk to churches as well as in, in the secular environment on sexuality because I believe that God wants us to have great sex inside a marriage. Inside marriage. Okay, because the only great sex is inside that covenant of marriage. We know that. But what happens is we have people who have great covenants of marriages, but they don't have a tool to have the conversation about sexuality. So we offer this as a tool for churches and for people to pick up so they can say, okay, I'm designed differently than you. Let's start celebrating that. Instead of trying to make me like you and you like me, what happens is and I work with counselors, people flying from all over the country to see me every week. And I've been putting together uh, bedrooms, so to speak, in marriages for you know, almost three decades. And so you learn a lot on the job. And one of the things <laughs> I learned is that we tend to project our style or our language of sexuality onto our spouse. Hmm. And so like maybe my sex language is fun. I like to try new things, I like to be spontaneous, right? Male or female, because it can be either way. And maybe uh, uh, hers is patience. Well, I'm going to keep shaming her into why she doesn't want to have fun, and she's going to keep shaming me into why I can't take my time and be patient and just enjoy this, right? So with the book, what helps is she can say, listen, I'm a patient love language, a sex language, rather, and I need you to take your time in this part of it. I need this. This is really helps me to celebrate sexuality. And then I understand that you're a fun thing. Okay, so maybe one time a week we'll try this, and one time a week we'll do this. Now we both can experience and learn and grow, which is the ultimate thing of God. Because, you know, I never see God put two people of the same of anything together. Okay, he loves to take people who have a little bit of growing to do and put them together yeah. and let them complement each other and become one, one fantastic unit. That's true of sexuality as well. I think one of the complaints I hear from so many women Mm -hmm. is why in the world did God make men with so much drive mm -hmm. and women with not? Why don't you answer that one before we get into this? Well, me? because he made them both in the image of God. Okay, God pursues us what? Every day. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not suggesting that a man needs to have sex every day. He doesn't. That's usually childish, okay? It, or he just doesn't know how to have great sex. Right. Okay, and so, but if he's having three-dimensional eyes open, lights on, nurturing conversation, really connecting. Now, see, the woman, she requires intimacy to actually feel aroused sexually. It's not that women's sex drives are less. It's that men are incompetent in emotional connection. Yeah, yep. Okay? Because I teach men, even in this book, I, I walk them through, do the feelings exercise, pray with your wife. Now, I'll have a man complain about how often he's having sex. Here's the way I deal with that. You, you love this. You know, maybe down somewhere. You know, with, we pray with me, Dr. Weiss. My wife doesn't want to have sex. I go, okay, how often are you praying with her? Oh, I don't pray with her. How often, how often do you share feelings with her, connect emotionally with her, like yeah. feelings, not anger, but feelings? Well, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Okay, you're too stupid to have good sex, <laughs> so let me start praying with you first. <laughs> okay, because what yeah. you're doing is you're shutting off her valve sexually because her valve sexually, she's not a button. Mm -mm. Okay, you have to connect with her spiritually and emotionally consistently. That arouses her sexually. Yeah. 
And when men finally believe me and finally do what I'm telling them to do, they never complain about how often they're having sex. But men as a whole struggle with sharing their feelings because we've all been trained to shut them down. Well, they, they struggle with the lack of skill, but this book gives them the skill. Okay. Okay, because I not only give you the five languages, I give you some of the roadblocks like sex addiction, intimacy, anorexia, and sexual abuse that can be limitations, but also immaturity, spiritual and emotional immaturity. And if you can move through doing the dailies with your spouse, two feelings, two praises, and prayer. I've been doing them almost 30 years, okay? Every day, I call my wife. I called her last night from Canada. Did our two feelings, did our two praises. I prayed with her. Why? Well, first of all, she's worthy of that, yeah. okay? And that's my commitment as a man, because I'm not a boy. Boys make excuses, men make plans. Doesn't matter where I am in the world, her man is going to show up every day because God shows up every day. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Well, me showing up every day that way makes her excited when I come home tonight. Right. Do you totally. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if men will plow the ground emotionally and spiritually, their sexuality will blossom. If they act like, you know, I don't know, okay, well, then maybe your wife doesn't know either. Yeah. Okay, because she will start shutting down because she doesn't feel close. Women open up from the heart towards you. Mm -hmm. Okay, men are different. They just have to look at you and they're ready. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's the gift of God. We don't we don't take a lot of work. <laughs> All right. So where do we start with the five languages? Well, you start first of all identifying which one you are, which one she is or he is, and in there I talk about the mature version and immature version of each one. Okay. Which is really helpful. Okay, like say we take the pleasure uh, sexual language. Well, that person wants to experiment. They want to take the sexual pleasure to greater lengths or heights, or they want. That's really they get a lot of fun out of that. They're like the little researcher, okay? Hey, let's try that and see if we do this or, okay? Well, that's fine and good in a, in a balanced uh, personality, but if it's in an immature personality, they demand it. Ooh. They control. They shame if you won't participate. And it becomes very unhealthy, okay? But, and now, uh, let's suppose um, one of the languages is about being wanted. Okay, so let's walk through this. I walk through the whole sexual environment thing, okay? What kind of sexual environment are you creating with your spouse? How do you invite your spouse, okay? How does the foreplay start? The act itself and then the after the act. I walk through each phase. Now suppose you don't know your spouse's sex language. You can bobble through that thing all the way through and then not exactly get what they were really connected to, okay? But let's suppose your spouse wanted, being wanted is really important for them, okay? and so you create an environment of them being wanted. You text them, I want you. You let them know, hey, I want you, in different ways. Okay, that's the environment. Then when you ask them, you don't say, you want to get lucky? Because <laughs> that doesn't hit their button. Right. But if I was to say to uh, uh, someone who had that uh, sex language, I really want you sexually. I've been thinking about you and only you. Well now, whew, compliment. Right, I've hit their, their heart the way their heart was made for sex. Okay, so now even starting, we're starting off better. Mm -hmm. So imagine if the, the Christian church around the world had a tool where they could actually have the conversation, an intelligent conversation, and say, okay guys, go home and practice this. I'm looking forward to churches buying this by the box and just handing it out. Right. Say, listen, we can't talk about this in church, but you go home and talk about it. Right. Tell us how that goes. And on Sunday, there's these big smiles and happy faces <laughs> yeah. and, oh, we got it, Pastor. Okay, because we need to get this right because the enemy's attacking the church sexually. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think that's why God's pouring out more revelation through the church to have healthy sexuality yeah. and to understand it better because most of us have internet, most of us have a porn store in our pocket. If you don't have a porn blocker, get it one for sure. Okay. Yeah, you said something earlier that I think is really powerful. So many men will say, I don't know what to talk about. If you both read the same book, just, you know, this is a great place to start. Absolutely. But I mean, even in your devotion time, Absolutely. even in your time raising kids, making more money, like if you both read the same book, you got something to add to what you Absolutely. want to talk about. Absolutely. So to, for couples to say, get the book and read mm -hmm. it together. Sure. And I would say that, get one on money. Exactly. Get one on parenting. Exactly. You know, marriage is a continuing education. It is. Okay. Nonstop. It, it, first off, you start off in marriage uh, in kindergarten. You should be growing from that point. If you're not adding to your library and your marriage library, you, your marriage will stay immature. Yeah. Okay, uninformed, unintelligent. But if you nurture that marriage like you would a child and say, okay, we're going to focus on this this year and grow this, we're going to grow this area this year and move forward and be intentional about it, you know, it's great, you know. Let's take a break right here. When we come back, can we go through what the five are? Sure. All right. I'll be right back with Dr. Doug Weiss. 
five sex languages. We'll be right back. And I see sexuality as more as an equal thing, men initiating, women initiating, back and forth. Okay, because it's being initiated towards also says that you love me, you want me, you find me attractive. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Today's devotional is from Matthew 10:29 and verse 31 and is written by Leon Fontaine. A good sense of self-worth is crucial, but it's something our world struggles with today, Christians included. Many Christians struggle with low self-worth because they have never learned where to get their sense of worth. They're getting their worth from the wrong places. The truth is, it's impossible to have a proper sense of self-worth if you don't get it from God. When people get their self-worth from other places, it doesn't work. For example, if you feel good about yourself because of your looks, what happens after 50 years of dealing with gravity? It's fine to take care of your appearance, but if you're doing it to try to maintain a sense of self-worth because it's tied up in your looks, you're barking up the wrong tree. If your self-worth comes from your job, you're standing on shaky ground. You see, if anything happens to that job, your world will be turned upside down. A layoff or demotion isn't just about your job being on the line. It threatens to destroy your self-worth. Where you get your self-worth is vital to your happiness in life. You will pursue what you think will give you self-worth, which may end up disappointing you. What are you worth? You are not just worth what you have done. We can't judge your worth by your marriage or money or looks or by any of your accomplishments. Your worth is not bound up in those things. You have worth because God loves you and he always will. Welcome back. My guest today is Douglas Weiss, who wrote this book, Five Sex Languages. All right. So where do you want to go? What are the five languages? We're all dying to know. Okay. Well, there, there's fun. We talked about that in that person. That person wants the spontaneous, wants the creative, wants fun and sexuality at the same time. Okay. And I kind of like someone who maybe they like a little uh, cherry flavor in their Coca-Cola. Okay. They like to mix fun and sexuality together. Okay, so they have a lot of ideas, be creative, and all that kind of stuff. The, the one we talked about uh, is actually called desire. The, this is the person who wants to be wanted. Okay. And that's really important to them. 
okay? They don't need to be beat up about that. Uh, patients we talked about, this is a person, they tend to like the same, okay? They tend to like the longer time. Time is love to them, okay? okay? So the quick thing's not going to work, okay? So you need to understand that. Planning is going to be really important for them. They like that. Let's take tonight off then, okay? Now see, if a guy's married to a woman who that's her sex language, yes, she's not going to necessarily be the fun person, but if you can learn her language, you can maybe talk her into some fun, okay? okay? So you want to do that. Um, pleasure, we talked about that. That's the person who's the researcher. They want to try different things. They want to read the books. They want to find out about that and this. And Okay, but for themselves and for their spouse, okay? And then the last one is acceptance and celebration. This person wants to know that you love all of who they are. You love that they serve. You love that they care. You love that they're intelligent. You love that they're this. You celebrate who they are globally and you bring it into the sexuality. It's not about being wanted. It's about you really like who I am. Okay. And because you like who I am, I can open up sexually to you in a different way. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, and none of these languages, it's, a, it's about the act. It's about the whole connectivity of it. Do you find right. that you can be a blend, or do you find that you're... You tend to have primary language, okay? okay. And what's almost always going to happen is your spouse is going to have an opposing language. Okay? Interesting. And so that is so that you can learn long-suffering and patience and <laughs> kindness. <laughs> I mean, how are you going to learn that stuff if you don't have an opportunity to be different for 30 years? Yeah. Okay? But this is where, you know, being, you know, we talked in another show about serving each other. And this is where serving each other shows up. It's like, okay, this is kind of the way you're made. I can accept that about you. And let me try to roll with that some. Instead of trying to make you like me, which is what a lot of people try to do sexually. I only like X. Well, I like Y, Z, and K. Okay? So we can experiment. That. And it's not just about the five sex languages. I teach them how to have good marriage, right. share their feelings, but also how to set up their sexual garden. So that even though they have different languages, what are, what's acceptable acts inside this for us? Okay, what, what works for us? Okay, now of course, no pornography, no third person. God totally is against that. Okay? Yes. All right. But there are things that some people might want to experiment with. Okay, mm -hmm. fine, as long as we're adults and we're doing this and no one's being bullied. Yep. Okay, Heard. you Heard. don't want to defile the bed. Okay, and bullying will defile the bed. Okay, because that's God's daughter you're messing with. <laughs> okay, so I wouldn't do that. And then teaching them how to actually have a, a sexual agreement, how they can decide, how often are we going to play? Okay, how, well, how are we going to do the initiation part of this? We're going to initiate back and forth? Or is it going to be, oh, this one person does all the labor of initiation? You know, a lot of people, uh, well, lots of different books have always given men specific roles and women specific roles. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I wonder, because sometimes there are women who are very well-spoken. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. And there's men who are very quiet and shy. Or there's men that are, like, mm -hmm. do you, how do you I give it to both of them. Okay, yeah. I say, you know, God made you both sexual. Yeah. Okay? I mean, that, there's proof to that, okay? <laughs> totally. And, and I see sexuality as more as an equal thing. Men initiating, women initiating back and forth. Okay, because being initiated towards also says that you love me, you want me, you find me attractive. If, if you never say no, but you never ask, there's still going to be an absence in their heart of feeling desired. Yeah. And that's not fair. Okay, we're supposed to love each other like Christ loves the church and the church loves Christ. Pursue one another. Yeah. Okay. I think the whole topic, you know, of there's a lot of good Christian books that are out there finally, mm -hmm. but I mean, years ago there was, but I find the whole topic of Christians still struggle with, are there boundaries? Is there a role? What's mm -hmm. proper? What's not proper? And I like how you just say, okay, just see it as a garden. Mm -hmm. you know, God's got some controls that are going to really be healthy for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But totally. then there's so much room to, to, de to know each other, sure. to develop skills, sure. to understand. And it ought to be uh, it ought to be a joy for the rest of your life it's supposed to, be. to explore this. And it's going to change as you age. And there's yeah. going to be things you can do and can't do as you age. And there's going to be, you know, limitations as you just naturally go through the process. And there's going to be places where that's our favorite spot to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Then go there. Enjoy right. that. But maybe you want to try this little spot and see what you think here. And you can experiment as long as you're being uh, good natured toward each other. I run into couples now at all there, who just say, you know, sex just isn't really something in either of us is, do you think that's healthy or is that dangerous? Well, I would, I'd, I would do a scan on their whole relationship too, you know, because if not praying together, not sharing feelings, not connecting, then the lack of intimacy is shutting them both down. They're both shutting down. Because intimacy is the fuel of sexuality. Yeah. Okay. And if you shut that down, 
it, it, it'll slow down the desire for sex. Now, the man's hormones might be okay with having sex without intimacy, but the woman won't be. Yeah. And it will begin to shut that down. And so, yeah. you have to look at the whole system. Yeah, sexuality is a healthy part for a married couple. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's, oh, we don't need it anymore. No, I think it's a bit of a warning sign that says... I think it's still death do us part. That's what I signed up for. Yeah. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> All right. So where do we go next? We've named the five languages. Mm -hmm. You're just saying both of you read the book because it'll, it'll guide you through this. Yeah, it'll give you language. Exa you're, you're learning a new language. Right. And then you say, okay, um, let's take your language of whatever, acceptance, okay? Let's take your language of this month. Let, let me get really good at that. And next month, let's do my language, and let's get really good at mine. And then we can play with it. Mm. I'm going to practice how to invite you. I'm going to practice what to say during. I'm going to practice say what to say afterwards. That yeah. will make you feel just so loved by me. Very cool. And you're like, oh, my gosh. Does it get better? Yes, yeah. it gets better and better. Yeah. Okay? But if you intentionally are doing it, it's a lot better than if you just accidentally get it right periodically. <laughs> That's true. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I know my wife's uh, uh, sex language, and I know how to work that. Okay? I know what to do with that. And it's my job to serve her that way. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, of course, it's different than mine. Yeah. Very cool. You know, I was reading, I think it's Red Book that does these sexual surveys. Yeah, they do. They do. And uh, one of the ones I was reading, and it's, an, it's quite a while ago now, was that actually, even, even with the Christian church mm -hmm. uh, not being as skilled and knowing as much as they should, they still have better sex lives Oh, that's a, that's a, the world that's has. That's statistically uh, been uh, there forever. Uh, religious women have the highest sexual uh, quality of sex life of any people on earth. But that's because they are engaged spiritually and emotionally, and they're, they're having sex in a relationship the yep. way God designed it. Yeah. Okay, and so yeah, and, and you take that, give the man some skill and some language and her, you could take that even higher up. Yeah, in most churches, you could be able to say best sex in town. It's just not, we just don't flaunt it right. like the world does. No, exactly. Okay. I was, I don't know if it was you or someone was telling me the story of, if you want to know what the best, what the most romantic wedding night would be for people, would be two rookies going to the bedroom, Ex not knowing exactly what to mm. do and knowing they've got the rest of their life to learn it. Yeah, absolutely. No one wants an expert. Yeah, no, and the, and the thing is, uh, sexuality evolves <laughs> exactly. and it grows. And your ability to uh, be present, connected, and communicate grows. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just get, sometimes you get better ideas as you get older. It's like, hey, we never tried that. Oh, we didn't. We should go try that. Right. Okay. And again, as long as it's fine and it's legal. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Some Christians know. have a hard time getting past that part. Yeah. 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 So you want to you want to just you know, be creative, be fun, and we don't need to be afraid of sexuality. It's very powerful, but when it's in the c container of marriage, yes, that power is to help us to connect and bond to one another, to empower us, give us good sleep, help us with stress, get rid of headaches, so that you can minister the next day. Okay. Whatever that is, work, parenting, marriage, whatever you got to do, it does help you. Yeah. Okay? And it's not to medicate your life, it's to complement your life. So good. Very good. Doug, thank you for being with us today. This has been awesome. Oh, good. Thank you. If you've been watching this, we're speaking with Dr. Doug Weiss from this book, Five Sex Languages. I want to encourage you to order it, get one for your spouse as well, and start some great conversations. We'll be right back. Church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church, and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. Dr. Weiss 
has some powerful insights into marriage. When it comes to being spirit contemporary, you know, we always talk about this term because it's so important. The gospel of Jesus Christ is powerful, beautiful. It sets people free. But the Bible literally helps us in every area of life, including marriage. And to be spirit contemporary, to be spiritually alive, filled with his word, his presence, his spirit, but then contemporary, able to connect to the people around you and especially your spouse. But the world is dying. It needs this Jesus that we're talking about. And you know, for $30, we would be able to go and reach so many more people. And I would love to send you as a gift a three-pack CD series that'll be a joy to you, that'll help you out to walk out this spirit contemporary life. You know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, if it goes forth in a way that is demeaning, legalistic, people just back away from it. If people don't hear the love of God, the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. And Spirit Contemporary is about presenting Jesus in a way that people love, accept, and are attracted to the Jesus that we serve. We'd love to have you go to that phone right now. And for a gift of $30 or more, we want to send you this pack. I know it's going to be encouragement to you. And I know that you get a chance to invest in something and to see someone's name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's powerful. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow in studio, Leon and Jay Warner Wallace discuss the evidence behind Christianity. Our views as Christians are in the second category. We're not trusting the, the, the personal visions of a prophet. We are, are trusting in the historicity, the, the claim of an event in history called the resurrection.